We're going to be looking at a really quick example for table variables in SQL Server and uh, basically a table variable is, is like any other variable. It's a variable. It's not saved to disk. It just basically exists in memory and when you're done with it, it goes poof and that's it. So <clears throat> because of that, there's actually some benefits over temp tables, uh, but you don't have the rigidity with temp tables where it'll, you know, a temp table can persist maybe sometimes longer than you want it to. This doesn't persist at all. Let me show you a very quick example. I have declare table, or you know, um, the, my, the name of my variable is tbl for table. That's usually what I always do. And then you have to use table as opposed to int or varchar. But what you have to do with a table variable is you have to define it. So you have to have an open paren and a closed paren, and then the names of your keys, and then the data type. And there's other things that you can do, but we're just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to declare the table, and then I'm going to do a select count. Um, you can see here that I already had this going, but let me do that. Uh, I'm going to do a select count. And by the way, do you see how this says no column name? This isn't really part of what the video is about, but I wanted to show you something too. If I just say select count from anything, if I don't give count a name, then it just says no column name. So I'm just going to put CNT for count and run that again. And now it says count. It doesn't matter here. Here it doesn't matter what we do, but if you have this um, if you're going to be using this from a stored procedure and it's going to be a record set feeding something in say VB or C sharp uh, and there's no name for the field, it can blow up. Uh, if you're trying to use that to populate perhaps fields in a data grid and that's one of the columns and there's no name, it can blow up. So always get in the habit. Um, you probably wouldn't do that for the count field, but if you're running a function on a field and forget to name it, problems. But now if you notice, I just ran this, and look, I keep running it, and running it, and running it, and running it, and running it. So just because this is a, vari because this is a variable, um, every time I run this, it's like recreating it. It just it forgets that it ever existed. It doesn't care. It just gets erased. Um, if I was uh, doing a select into a temp table here, if I did this one time, the table would exist in the temp database until I, the connection is broken, either through this window or some other means. So the beauty of this is this really is um, just in memory, and it, it doesn't really persist at all. Now, the only thing that you couldn't do, you probably wouldn't do something like this. This will probably get like at least one error. Um, if I try to run this now, when I say it doesn't persist, that doesn't mean that I can declare it two times and keep selecting from it, because you can't really do that with any variable. That's like declaring two ints called, you know, x. You, you just, it doesn't, you can't really do that in any programming language. So let me do this. Yeah, you see, it says the variable name blah 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 has already been declared, so you know you can't do that in any kind of programming. Um, but if you do it like this, like I mentioned, you could do this forever and ever and ever. So huge difference between that and temp tables. 